Hello and welcome back. I'm Rachel. You're watching Calkine TV live from Sydney. And this is the Stocks in Action show. Let us have a look at the ASX 200 and the ASX listed stocks that are trending today. The week ending 21st of May 2021 witnessed Australian indices ending their session in the black at 7,030.3. That's up 0.15%. The benchmark index was constantly on the move last week. However, it closed positively on a weekly basis with a 0.23% rise as local tech stocks took cues from an upbeat Wall Street session on signs of a pickup in U.S. jobs growth this month. Today, the S&P SX200 is down just 6.50 points to 7,023.80. The bottom performing stocks in this index are the A2 Milk Company down at 3.06% and AMP down 2.89%. Over the last five days, the index is virtually unchanged, but it's currently 2.08% below its 52-week high. Sectors are mixed today, along with the S&P SX200 index. Five sectors are higher, six are lower. The information technology sector is the best performing sector, gaining 0.38% and 5.15% for the last five days. On that note, let us quickly glance through some major market movements globally. On Friday, the majority of the U.S. stocks ended lower, with consumer discretionary and technology shares taking the hardest hit. While the U.S. dollar gained some ground after stronger than expected U.S. manufacturing data, the U.S. Treasury yields eased as investors mostly shrugged off the data. Data firm IHS Market revealed that U.S. Manufacturing Purchase Managers Index rose to 61.5 in the first half of May 2021. That's the highest reading since October 2009. Economists polled by Reuters had forecast the index falling to 60.2 in early May. The Dow Jones rose 0.36% to 34,207.84, while the S&P 500 lost 0.08% to 4,155.86. The Nasdaq Composite dropped 0.48% and closed the session at 13,470.99. The rising COVID-19 cases globally remain a concern. According to the World Health Organization, official death tolls attributed to the coronavirus pandemic are likely to be a significant undercount. Approximately 6 million to 8 million people may have died so far, according to the WHO, compared to the reported figure of around 3.4 million. On Friday, the benchmark 10-year Treasury notes rose 3-32 in price to yield 1.6233%. That's from 1.634% on Thursday. The US dollar index rose 0.27% to 90, while the Australian New Zealand dollars traded lower on Friday, taking their lead from iron ore and mining stocks that have been hit after Beijing vowed to put a halt on the soaring commodity prices. In the cryptocurrency market, Bitcoin fell sharply over 10% after China doubled down on its efforts to prevent speculation and financial risks by cracking down on the mining and trading of Bitcoin. The crypto fell 11.5% to 35952 dollars with its peers Dogecoin losing 11.3% to 30.3 cents and Ethereum falling 8.8% to $2,095.05 US cents. On Thursday, the Fed flagged the risks cryptocurrencies posed to financial stability, while the U.S. Treasury Department called for new rules that require large cryptocurrency transfers to be reported to the Internal Revenue Service. And now, before we head to the other important market updates, let us take a small break, but don't go anywhere, as I'll be back very shortly. At Calkine TV, we'll take you to the heart of the Australian equity market. We'll bring you breakthrough stories that highlight volatility, as well as tailwinds building across the length and breadth of markets. Whether space travel will gain momentum, while economies may gradually open amid vaccine rollouts, our experts will share their timely inputs. So join us on this exciting journey of live streaming, financial and stock market news. Calkine TV.
And now welcome back to the Stocks in Action show. Let's take a look at some commodity updates. Gold prices inched lower on Friday as robust U.S. manufacturing data helped the dollar rebound from the lower levels. However, the yellow metal was still able to register a third straight weekly gain. Asia's iron ore benchmark marked its third losing day on Friday, its second consecutive weekly fall, as the largest steel producer, China, stepped up efforts to cool a soaring demand-driven rally in raw material prices. Iron ore futures for September delivery on China's Dalian Commodity Exchange closed daytime trading 3.4% lower at 1,096.50 yuan, and that's around 220 Australian dollars and 87 cents a, a ton. It had fallen 5.4% last week, the steepest drop since mid-March. Oil prices jumped to around 2% after three days of a losing streak, with investors watching a storm brewing up over the western Gulf of Mexico. However, prices fell on a weekly basis as investors braced for supplies from Iran after officials said the country and world powers had made progress on a nuclear deal. Crude oil prices are trading higher on Monday, followed by a significant 2% gain on Friday amid cyclone fears in the Gulf of Mexico. Brent crude oil futures for August delivery traded at 0.14% up at $66.44 US cents per barrel, whereas WTI crude oil futures for July delivery traded at $63.70 per barrel. That's 0.19% up as of the 24th of May at 10 o'clock Australian Eastern Standard Time. On Friday, the U.S. National Hurricane Center stated that a weather system over the western Gulf of Mexico has a 40% chance of becoming a cyclone. However, the most recent update from the center states that the system has now weakened. Despite a significant rise on Friday, crude oil witnessed its first weekly loss in May, due to a strong sell-off in commodities amid the progress of the U.S. Iran nuclear deal, rising coronavirus cases in Asia and higher inflation concerns from Europe and China and the U.S. are offsetting crude oil gains. And now before we move to the ASX-listed stocks that are trending today, let us take a small break. Don't go anywhere. I'll be back very soon. The market takes the weekend off, but your money won't. Get a comprehensive update on the ASX listed stocks and market trends. Watch the experts touch upon the fundamental and technical developments and trending strategies in the equity space. We will be your daily guide as you explore the Australian share market, be it global vaccine developments or China's trade relations or global political turmoil or economic revival prospects. We will bring you live updates driving the equity market trends. Calkine TV. And a very warm welcome back to the Stocks in Action show. Let us have a look at some major news from the ASX listed companies today. Healthcare sector will be dominating this Stocks in Action session along with consumer sector and mining. Let us have a look at the first big news of the day. Australian Potash has received firm commitments from investors for a placement of $10 million. This will be accomplished via two-tranche placement. The funds extracted will be used for pre-development activities at the Lake Wells Sulfate of Potash Project and starting the Maiden Downhole Hammer Program across the Laverton Downs nickel sulfide target areas. The company also confirmed that a total of 62 million twenty-two hundred twenty-one thousand and 428 shares will be issued in the first tranche at 14 cents per share. Moving on now to the next big news, USCOM's digital ultrasonic spirosonic AIR spirometer has secured the CE mark approval. The spirosonic AIR is the leading technology in spirometry using USCOM's patented multipath digital ultrasonic technology, wireless induction charging and BT for wireless communications. The CE mark stands for legal compliance with health, safety and environmental standards set by the European community. This mark is essential for the sale of new medical technologies into the European economic area. 
Moving on, Caspian Resources has reported intersection of broad sulphide zones at the Yarrabrook Hill near Perth in Western Australia. The drilling is now finished following the completion of two holes at Yarrabrook Hill for a total of 601.6 metres. Both the holes have encountered significant widths of sulphides. Moving on to the next big news, Infinity Lithium Corporation has presented an update on its San Jose Lithium project in Spain at the European Battery Alliance Day in Madrid. San Jose is a fully integrated industrial project focused on the production of battery-grade lithium chemicals. It is the second largest York hard rock lithium deposit in the EU and is located in Spain, the second largest market for battery-grade lithium after China. The project has also secured the EIT Inno Energy funding. The mine has an adjacent conversion plant and reports a low carbon footprint and sustainable operations. Australia's Zipco reports today that it has set to acquire two buy now pay later companies operating in Europe and the United Arab Emirates for a combined consideration of around $160 million. The company says it will buy all the remaining shares of European BNPL company Twisto Payments and in the Middle East focused Peer Spot Eye Holdings. That's operational in the UAE and Saudi Arabia. ZIP is building its playbook in successfully identifying, completing and integrating, integrating strategic acquisitions. Twisto and Sp Spot Eye are now well positioned to leverage the benefits of this com com competency and the synergies of a truly global payments organization. Twisto and Spotty are integrated into Zip's global single merchant interface, which provides merchants instant access to 11 countries across five continents. Zip has adopted a similar approach to QuadPay, and this was highly successful. Okay, then that's all for me for now. Stay tuned with Calkind TV for more live market updates. We'll be back with more news on the markets, the economy and diverse themes and sectors. I'm Rachel, signing off for now.